and I'd like to welcome National Manager Phil Hill. Thanks, Al. I'll just pick up on uh, Troy's theme about the Commonwealth Bank. So I'm an ex Commonwealth Banky. Is there any, anyone else here at Commonwealth Bank? Yep, another one. So don't hold that against me. Um, Commonwealth Bank was good for me for 19 years. Uh, helped them create a lot of profit, so they got, got me to thank for where they are. Um, when I found the club, I thought I was pretty smart and knew everything. Uh, commerce qualified, ex bank manager, uh, tr bought a my first property through Leslie, who was my first property mentor, Leslie Collegia from South Australia. And I was doing my own finance through the Commonwealth Bank. Thought 19 years they'll look after me. Second property they wouldn't lend for me. I said, no, we heard it this morning, you're not, we're not going to lend to you anymore. So finally put in one of these finance capacity forms that they were called in those days, now cash pack form. And the broker came back and said, we can get $300,000. Guess which bank through? Commonwealth. So Commonwealth wouldn't lend it, but the broker got me 300000 through the Commonwealth. So there you go. Banks, they're funny creatures. <laughs> Bastards, yeah. That's Kevin's line. I don't say that because they're all nice people because they do lend us all money, don't they? So that's my topic that uh, we're looking at. And how do, how do we get there? Like, There's roadblocks and speed bumps. Wendy calls them speed bumps along the way. So what gets in our way um, along our journey? And it is a journey. And like Gar said, we're all built big portfolios and Harple's got 20 odd properties and so is Wendy and Kevin's got 189, whatever it is. So it is a journey and there are problems along the way. So we call them speed bumps. So it is a change in the, the mindset and the attitude uh, in this journey. And these are some of the other, other items. And I touched on the, the, the finance side. So having the right finance structure is critical. Using lenders mortgage insurance. Uh, my, my accountant hates it. He calls, us, calls it lose money instantly. He can't understand why we pay lenders mortgage insurance and still doesn't. He knows that I can claim it as a tax deduction. He's a property investor himself in South Australia, buys and sells. But he he's, uh, still uh, does the right thing by me for my tax return, but he just doesn't like lenders mortgage insurance. I love it because it means I can buy more properties. So uh, to achieving this wealth, we need to look at price and quality. So diversifying our properties in price range, type, and we heard this morning Kevin talking about one bedroom unit, units are a, a good strategy, as well as different types of properties. So diversifying around the country. So when I started in the club in 2003, we, all, every time we could buy a property, it was Queensland. So we've got eight in Queensland. So we're really well diversified. Got the whole coast covered. <laughs> so Gold Coast, Brisbane, Sunshine Coast, Cairns. So, Bring on the growth up here. So I hope Kevin's right with what he says about South East Queensland. So I've mentioned the different stock, st stock types, so the, the units, the townhouses, etc. So these little speed bumps can be insignificant. So it might be a big thing at the time, but when you look at your portfolio and over time, it's just a little speed bump. So expect problems. You know, there is a risk in any investment we do, um, and there are going to be problems. Um, we've heard from different uh, people saying we're, we're dealing with individuals building properties, so sometimes there could be a problem with a property and we need to, to work around that. So body corporates can add values and, and at our PMC events, uh, Wendy does a fantastic presentation on body corporates, so um, understanding your body corporates is, um, and participating in those helps you in your wealth creation and your, your journey. I won't touch too much on that because Kevin bagged them this morning, valuers. So um, th there is uh, speed bumps with uh, valuations and we see them every day. There's a few going on in Melbourne at the moment, uh, huge low valuations coming in. But we work around it. The brokers are now able to uh, work around some of these problems with valuers. And we need to have a long-term focus. So it's not just short-term. So you know, Troy and I, we're the complaints department. So when there's members who have problems with their properties and their portfolios, I brought a property last year and it hasn't doubled in one year. So they want to know why Kevin's strategy is not working. So we need to make sure we understand it's a long-term um, process and focus. And there's going to be other things that happen along that journey that will be little speed bumps, but don't be put off by those. So you need to surround yourself by a team, and Gar spoke about Harple this morning. He's uh, got a fantastic team over in... WA and Garth's um, 
property mentors are leading the way, so we can all learn from those guys. So the team you have, sometimes you can't do much about your partner, um, but you have to work around that. She's at home. She's at home, yeah, she's gone home sick. We, we got off the plane and she got, got the Queensland cold and she's been down ever since. She was here this morning. So having the right broker, the right accountant, so all, all your team needs to be working for you. And if, and if you have one of those cogs in your team that's not working, your journey and your creating of your wealth is not going to work. So make sure you've got that right team in whatever you're doing with your planning. So Kevin's plan sort of changes a little bit and we heard Kevin this morning talk about selling. Um, and I know our intro workshop says never, never sell, but the last couple of years, Wendy and myself at the international events talk about selling. And three years ago, they actually went through ta uh, capital gains tax implications. So depending on your personal situation, you may have to sell. So, so it is a, 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 Kevin's plan is accumulating residential property. So hence the change to the property club, so we know that we're dealing with property. It's a long-term approach, so don't think your property's gonna double overnight. Sometimes you can be lucky and get in the market in Perth and you might get doubling in, in a couple of years, but uh, not generally. So it's buying a multiple size portfolio of properties. And once again, long-term approach, so you need the equity to grow. So once again, Troy and myself, when we get uh, members saying this strategy's not working, their LVRs are up 80 to 90% and they've been going on holidays, not applying their tax refund to their line of credit. So they're spending the, the money before they have the equity to live on. So then we need to set our retirement amount and then we access that. So we access the equity when we can. So when is that that we can access our equity? So we need to have a, a goal and a plan. So anyone got a written plan and goal? Does everyone, there's only about a quarter of the room here. So has anyone not got a FIDO completed? Yeah, probably half the room. So your plan has to be written, believable, challenging, specific, measurable, and timely. So our FIDO program is all of that. So if you haven't had a FIDO completed, you need to talk to your property mentor and get a FIDO completed. So I've got one put together here just to illustrate, and there are large numbers in here to show you how the FIDO works um, for our members. So we put in all the details of your own home on this uh, first tab. Hey, you like Millier, do you, Kai? Excellent. And ultimately, the FIDO should show us three things. Now, I mentioned before, uh, with the FIDO, um, and a lot of members, they think 80, 90%, we can just start living on it. But however, before you start drawing on your um, portfolio, your, your equity, Initial drawdown has, has to be between 30 and 50 cent of your equity increase. So there's three key rules. So if you take anything from today, take these three key rules down. So when you get your FIDO, you can look at um, what your property mentor has done with your FIDO. So when you start drawing down, your LVR level needs to be below 60%. So we heard Kevin say, potentially LODOC and, and NODOC loans are coming back more plentiful, second tier lenders coming back in the market. So the reason our um, LVR is set at 60%, so on your FIDO there's a red line and I'll show you on the next slide. You need to be down below the 60%, so down around 30 to 50, so you can borrow up to 60%. Because you can get some borrowing currently up to 60% low doc. And your equity to debt growth ratio. So your equity rate of increase, so what your portfolio is growing, is greater than the debt rate of increase, so what you're drawing out. So you don't want to be drawing out more than what your portfolio is growing. So they're the three rules. And we'll show you a photo how that all comes into play. So when you put your photo together with your property mentor, you put in your portfolio. So you can name all your properties, year of purchase, purchase price. We probably need to do a bit more training on this with property mentors, but I always separate the line of credit out, and in the FIDO we have to put a one in to uh, calculate the debt, and you have to put 50 years doubling, so it never doubles. So you can factor it in if you've got, got to um, apply to each property, but 
but I put it in separate. So then you've got your per oops, purchase price. Used to double gets a bit distorted, but I've gone 10 years on all the properties. Your debt and your value. And in the retirement year, the, if there's a shortfall, we need to factor in what that shortfall might be. So if you're going to live on money and you've still got a shortfall in your portfolio, you need to factor that in as well. So in this example, we're going financially independent in 15 years, 3% inflation rate. I always go a little bit higher on interest rates in case you've got an interest rate rise. Uh, Troy did show CBA 15 years. They don't actually put that on their website anymore. They only put up to five years. So I talked to Kevin, bef Kevin before. We think uh, CBA um, economists aren't really sure what's happening with interest rates long term. So you go to the CBA website, have a look at that. Um, so the LVR, 60%. So you can see here, that's always been there. Always since we had FIDO. So members who start drawing on their portfolio above 60% aren't really following Kevin's retirement plan. So I want to live on $90,000 in 15 years. At 3% inflation, $140,000 would be required to draw down. So can I do it in 2026, drawing down $140,000? Portfolio value, debt, your LVR. So debt as a percentage of your portfolio, 39%. I can borrow $2.5 million and $7.5 million in equity. And my equity is growing at $622,000. And this is the... LVR graph for the left brain people. I think it's left brain. Um, you can see the spikes when you're buying properties, so your LVRs go higher, but over time you want that to continue down and remain below the 60%. So people like phone book numbers. So in the back of the program, your property worth 500,000 now in 10 years time, 2021, worth a million dollars. So you can see that your, your portfolio is doubling every 10 years on each property. Your line of credit stays constant as one, so we, that's why we put it in as 50 years. So we need to capture that debt in your FIDO. So in 2026, when we start drawing on this portfolio, 140,000, we've factored in $70,000 for the shortfall. So I actually have to draw down $210,000. So uh, that's your portfolio value. So this line was pretty much on the previous graph that's on the uh, independence tab. So when you get your FIDO from your property mentor. LVR, 39%. That's the equity. How much you can borrow. Equity increase. So you see over time, even drawing down 3% inflation each year, drawing these, these amounts, LVR is coming down. Also illustrated in the summary graph. So... You can see when you're accumulating properties, your debt's higher than your equity. But this is ideally what you want to see, your portfolio value accelerating away with your equity away from your red debt line. And this is the amount you're withdrawing, the little dotted line. It's quite small compared to your portfolio value. So like we said, diversify around the country because you capitalise on different markets where your property's growing, other markets are a bit flat. These are the stages we talk about, accumulation stage. So while you're buying properties, you can see the spikes in your, your LVR going higher. Then you consolidate, so you need to sit there at some stage and wait for your properties to grow, and that takes time. And then when you get to the end, you harvest. So you've got your portfolio size, um, you know you can start drawing on that equity. So this is your retirement funds, so the money you're going to draw out, and this is your equity increase. LVR, so we said before, this red line has always been on our FIDO, 60%, so your LVR needs to be below 60%, currently at 39. So there's a bit of plug for Kevin's book. So in Kevin's book, there's also chapter 14. You can do a calculation. So if you want to retire in 2026 during that 140,000, you're expecting your properties to double in 10 years, which is a 7.2% capital growth. The factor is 13.9, so you'd need to have 
portfolio equity of 1.94 million equity. So currently this portfolio's got 7.5 million, only need 1.9, so it's starting to look good. So how do these rules that I just showed you before, the three rules apply to this scenario? So your equity increase, so we said your initial drawdown has to be 30 to 50% of your equity increase. So this is the equity increase, 622,000. 30%, 186, 50%, 311. We're only drawing 140,000, which is 22.5%. So big tick for rule number one on this portfolio. It can sustain drawing 140,000 out. Number two, your LVR levels below 60%, around 30 to 50 and in decline. 36 in decline. Ticks the second rule. Equity rate of increase is greater than the debt rate of increase. So equity rate of increase, 622. Debt rate of increase, 210. Ticks that. So this portfolio meets those three rules. And for the, like I said, for the left brain people, you can see there, equity rate of increase is your green equity line, is greater than your debt rate of increase. So quite simple, if you take those three rules away, and when you go back, talk to your property mentor, and this is the form you need to fill out for your property mentor, the FIDO worksheet. So put in the, your details, and your property mentor and your branch manager. All the details of your own home. So your purchase price, current value, etc., of your property, and then your portfolio details. So all your investment properties, year of purchase, purchase price, current value, debt, at your estimation of years to double. So your property mentor can't give advice. So you need to look at all the information and like what Troy showed before, we can see what each market's doing. So you, you have to say what your property is doubling and what you think your cash flow might be in retirement. So if you've got a long time, if you're a young investor and you've got 20, 30 years, your portfolio should be neutral or possibly cash flow positive. And then your, your variables. So in the example I had at 90,000 uh, in 15 years time to be financially independent, inflation rate at 3%, interest rate eight and a half. So you can estimate those figures for your property mentor and you can also give some different variables to see how your portfolio comes out. So short, sharp and sweet, three rules if you remember those. Um, I did the hands up before Kevin, probably a third of the room haven't had a photo done. So homework for everyone is to go, get, go home and talk to your property mentor, ask for the photo worksheet, you've taken down those three rules hopefully when you get the result back from your property mentor, apply those rules to your own uh, FIDO. So that's uh, Kevin's world-class uh, unique uh, program. So uh, available through your property mentor free of charge. Thanks for your time and hopefully you get a little bit out of that in creating wealth. <laughs>